Aloha, and welcome to the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency, home to the world's largest anthropological forensic laboratory. I'm Sergeant First Class Corey Otterberg, and I'll be your tour guide today. Follow me. On the third floor is our laboratory. You are viewing the largest forensic skeletal laboratory in the world. That's right, the entire world. These glass cases represent the three main pursuits of DPAA, investigation, recovery, and identification. The first case represents investigation. During the investigation phase, our teams comb through numerous historical documents, records, and anything that might provide insight as to where a loss incident occurred so that we can move on to the next phase, which is recovery and excavation. These are the tools and maps we use as we begin to plan our missions. The maps and GPS equipment in this case spotlight the vast amount of preparation and research which are done by our historical analysts. Let's move to the next cabinet which spotlights our recovery missions. As a scientific recovery expert, my job is to lead a team full of specialists and recovery NCOs on the excavation. Our job is to document everything that happens. This includes how deep we dig, what direction we dig, and what type of evidence that we're recovering. The third case represents identification. It contains artifacts, cast models, and family reference sample tools used in this process. DPA's laboratory consists of many moving parts that work together to research and analyze possible Aussie's remains found around the world. Hi, I'm Star Lavin. I'm with the DPA laboratory. I work in forensic radiography, and you are looking at our CT and X-ray room. We use the CT in order to better visualize inside material evidence so that whatever we can't see on the surface might better tell the story of what happened to those remains or where those that material evidence might have come from. We place it on the scanner, run it through. We're able to see inside. When possible osseous remains are located in the field, they are then brought back for more in-depth analysis. These processes include histology and isotope testing by DPAA scientists in the lab. The idea behind isotope testing is simply to look at the records of your diet and drinking water that you record in your tissues. So this is actually a vial of collagen that has been extracted from a cow femur. And this is the same collagen that we have in our bones, we as humans. And we're just looking at the protein. Collagen is the um, protein that gives bone its flexibility. So we just extract that protein out of a bone, and then we measure the isotopes in there to say something about the individual's diet. In this case, what did the cow eat in its lifetime? We're in essence using what they eat as a way to say what population they belong to. I do something called histology, which means the study of uh, tissue. So the reason why we do this is when we go out in the field, we look at uh, remains that come from different types of conflicts bone gets fragmented and sometimes um, when it's been in the burial environment in the ground for a very long time that means that the fragments that we can then retrieve are very small like maybe the size of your thumbnail and we look for certain uh, structural components and the reason why we do that is we want to determine whether it is bone first of all and then when we determined it is bone um, we can look for specific structural elements um, that tell us whether something may be animal um, or that it's possible that it's human. To facilitate a comparison, a skeletal analyst radiographs the skeletal remains in a series of images to approximate the positioning of the individual during induction radiography. Uh, during the military induction screening, individuals were asked to stand against an image receptor in a common stance. What we do here is we try and approximate the position of the individual during the anti-mortem screening process. 
This method has provided DPAA with an additional line of evidence to aid in the identification effort. At DPAA, DNA testing is one line of evidence used to support identification. DNA samplers use various cutting tools and equipment to obtain a sample from the remains for different types of testing. So when we get the set of remains, we typically take a bone sample. So this is an example of an animal bone. This is non-human. And we cut a sample using our um, sampling equipment and a variety of tools. Once a bone sample is obtained from the remains and documented in accordance with DPAA laboratory standard operating procedures, DNA samples are sent to the Armed Forces Medical Examiner System Armed Forces DNA Identification Laboratory. There are two types of DNA, mitochondrial DNA and nuclear DNA. Both can be utilized to aid in the identification of a missing service member by comparing the DNA to a family reference sample or excluding other potential DNA matches. We look at teeth, we look at fragments of teeth, we look at jaws, whatever comes in dentally we examine, we analyze, we create records, and we try to compare them to the records of service members that have passed. One of the cases that I had recently, there happened to be a the service member happened to be smiling in his photo, and you could see what was called a diastema, which is a gap between the two front teeth. And it just so happened that the set of remains that we obtained did not have any teeth in them, but if you were to look at the bone, you could see clearly that the two front teeth would have been splayed. There would have been a huge gap between them. So that's really helping us to strengthen the association of those remains to that service member. Really, the only two definitive methods to positively identifying an individual can come from DNA or dental in this lab. The nice thing about teeth is you can, the outside can be used for isotope testing and then the inside underneath that enamel is what is used for DNA testing. And so um, if sometimes if you can't get a, a a good hit on a DNA sample, we can, we can use the isotope testing to kind of help us out. The responsibility of the anthropologist is to establish the biological profile, and this includes sex, age, ancestry, stature, and perimortem trauma, or trauma that happened at or around the time of death, and then any general observations about those remains. DPAA scientists will take the material in front of them and begin to analyze. For example, have you ever broken a bone? or had any dental work? Is it documented? Is there a medical record? These are the types of things we would look for, which can be another line of evidence in the identification. DPAA has an additional laboratory located at Offutt Air Force Base. Like the Hawaii Lab, we analyze human remains and material evidence to contribute to the identification process. We also have anthropologists who deploy for recoveries at sites around the world. But different from the Hawaii lab, our staff is a little smaller and most of our casework comes from Europe, so we focus mostly on World War II identifications. Thank you for your interest in DPAA and its mission to fulfill our nation's promise to bring home our country's heroes. We invite you to visit our website, dpaa.mil, and to be our ambassador to salute these heroes and their sacrifices for our freedom. Thank you for joining us at the DPAA Laboratory. Aloha.